Good morning, everyone. Another beautiful day in Columbia, South Carolina. We're so excited to be here today as we announce the relocating of our City of Columbia Law Enforcement and Judicial Center as we're consolidating departments to need space across the city. And this is the first of hopefully many moves to bring our uh, employees together. But we're so excited about moving here in 400 Laurel Street. Um, as we affectionately call it, the Aflac building, but soon to have a beautiful new sign on the side of it, uh, announcing it as our a judicial center here in CPD's office. Having our CPD here in our gateway, I think, really sends a positive message, but it also, it allows us to bring together our departments. One of the things that we've, we've noticed over the years is that we're spread out. And for us to really work together in unison, you know, when you got leaders, specialists, officers, detectives, analysts all working together in one building, being able to share information and ideas it's also really great for recruiting to show that we're invested in our law enforcement. As you can tell behind us, this is going to be a great project. Not only will we have the court system here, uh, we'll also have our EOC here, our emergency office, management office, but also Metro and our police headquarters. So putting more people together to allow them to collaborate, work together to protect our city in a united front. And we're so excited about that. You know, but several people want to know, well, what are y'all doing with Justice Square? What are you doing with Metro? What are you doing with the corner of Bull and Taylor? Well, guess what, folks? We're selling them. We're putting them back out there, putting it back on the tax rolls so that we can be consolidated and selling. We're selling close to about 13 properties across the city um, so that we can put that back in the tax roll as we consolidate and pull all of our employees together. And we're very excited about that. And obviously we want to do everything we can to support our police department, support our employees as we continue to invest. Two years ago when we came together as a council as part of our strategic plan, we said we wanted to invest in the city first. That means investing in our employees, investing in facilities, investing in technology, training, and allowing our employees to have the autonomy to do their job. Well, this is one of those tools, a uh, center that will be filled with technology and allow us to really go after making sure that we're taking care of our community one block at a time, one officer at a time. With that, I want to turn it over to Chief Skip Holbrook, who can't contain himself, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have to contain himself just a little while longer, uh, Mayor. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm Teresa Wilson, City Manager, and this is just an amazing day. I'm going to give a little Con more context. The mayor certainly gave some great context. I'm going to go a little bit down history lane just really briefly um, because the chief and I always feel like a little somewhat like we've been on a journey or still on a journey to uh, being best in class and that started when uh, William Holbrook Skip our chief was hired in April of 2014 and so I think that this morning and all week as I've been um, planning for this day, I it wasn't lost on me that his 10 years of service to the city is coming up next year. And um, taking some of you in, out here today were a part of the, uh, the initial journey starting when we were back in 2014 um, hire, going on this national search for a police chief. And uh, at the time in Columbia, there had been this revolving door. You know, go back and look at the media reports. That's the quote you'll always see. And for me, um, one of the best decisions I think I've ever made in my career and tenure here at the city of Columbia was um, having that search, but also um, fulfilling the desires of, this, of our officers and our community, our council at the time with the best chief in the country. And so at the time, it was a little bit like a very bad episode of The Bachelorette, I think, because there are these candidates who were here and we were going through this process and they all were great in their own ways. But what stood out with Chief Holbrook was his uncanny um, 
the, the candor, the transparency about as they were given the opportunity to have a little bit of time with the officers and our facilities. Some were coming back with, you know, data and policy and procedure type things. But what stood out, and he'll remember this, a conversation that he and I had was about two things. It was about the uniforms of the officers that he was noticing some inconsistency. And look at them today in their class A's, y'all. Don't they look good? Let's give them a hand. Um, but he talked about that was important to him to create pride in um, the culture of our officers. And he talked about the facilities. And the facilities um, over these last 10 years, we've done what we can and we continue to do what we can. But today is the day where we've made some really key decisions to um, make transformational change. And that is due to a lot of hard work that Mayor Rickman mentioned that this seat at council is so encouraging of. Um, but it allows us to support our chief and his team. He's a true cops cop. Um, he has shown that same determination during his interview process since then. And as you all know, as a community, we've had lots of obstacles, a 100-year flood, a line of duty death, social unrest, and a worldwide pandemic. But through all of that, we've also had a lot of successes, including organizational reforms, um, a very focused effort on 21st century, 21st century policing accomplishments. Our officers are now, due to our council's commitment, afforded a step pay plan and other operational improvements to help them do their jobs. This facility, to me, really bookends a chapter in the police department where we have been focused on these organizational and operational tools to ensure retention and recruitment of the best officers and, in turn, a safe and secure Columbia. Um, in this new chapter, the police department is well positioned to continue to provide exceptional service delivery to our citizens, businesses, and visitors, but in a state-of-the-art facility, which I know Chief will talk about momentarily, reflective of the growth and development that the City Council is actively encouraging. The location for the Law Enforcement and Judicial Center was chosen with intention and purpose near the I-126 gateway to Columbia, and it will welcome our citizens, businesses, and visitors to a safe and thriving city. As referenced, the center will also house the very important functions of the municipal court, and some of our municipal, municipal court judges is here, are here, as well as our court administrator, and we're so thankful for them, as well as our assistant city manager, Pam Benjamin, who oversees that function. Um, and our emergency management um, de department led by Harry Tinsley, our director of emergency management, is here as well. The redesign of the building to accommodate these expanded operations will be accomplished in the next phases of the project. The current phase, though, is to upfit the police department, and it's underway. And we're entering right now the initial design services with our amazing partner, LS3P. Um, I want to thank Mary Beth Branham, the principal in charge, and her entire team. They're here today. We thank them, including David Anderson, Jason Likas, Tyler McKenzie, and Nick Day. Thank you. Great job so far. Uh, in addition, I would love to thank Steve Anastasian. I know I, there he is earlier, the managing partner with Baker and Baker Real Estate Developers and his team for the partnership and collaboration during this acquisition. Thank you, Steve. Again, thank you to our mayor and city council entrusting me and the staff with transformational projects that will serve as catalysts to ultimately spur private development and generate revenue in our city. We're continuing to build a foundation here for responsible growth, and we're concentrating on our internal spaces, as you see, and facilities, but we're also trying to facilitate real estate and economic development opportunities citywide. Our ED <laughs> staff and team is here. We've hired real estate professionals. We're so thankful for Ryan and Grace and Spencer, who are here helping with that. 
And again, we're trying to be solutions oriented with the mindset to address impediments to growth, identifying catalyst projects again, and seeking these partnerships with real estate development and design professionals who can help us get this done. Our commitment is to create meaningful connections and vibrant spaces for our citizens, businesses, visitors, and employees. So with that, I will now introduce our Chief of Police, William Skip Holbrook, and I will say it has been very fun to watch during this holiday season a grown man who is like a kid in the candy store. Energy and pride in this department for him is infectious and we're very thankful for this team. Thank you. And I'll come back up afterwards to give a few more details and answer any questions. I, I gotta try to keep it together. I'm um, in my in my uh, more mature age I'm I'm really a kind of a pushover now. I'm just uh, I get I get um, wouldn't you all agree with that pushover? <laughs> uh, you know, well, first, thank you all for being here. Um, I did not know what Miss Wilson was going to say, and, and thank you for everything that you said. Um, but when I when I start with my remarks, you're going to see that what she said um, is aligned really interestingly with what I'm going to say, and. Um, I don't think that's by chance. We didn't discuss what we were going to talk about, um, but um, I think it's important that leadership is aligned in the way they think, and, the, and it's clear that um, her vision for the city and, and public safety and, and this department is certainly aligned with ours, and I'm thankful for that. So I bet most of you probably have no idea where you were March 21st, 2014 at 9 a.m. in the morning. I do. It was a bright sunny day, very similar to this morning, a little bit warmer, but I was standing at a podium like today. Um, I was flanked by rank and file officers and city staff and CPD staff just like today, and the city manager and, and the mayor spoke just like today. The difference was on that day, Ms. Wilson, Ms. Wilson was introducing me as her selection to be the next Columbia Police Chief. And we were also positioned in front of the century old 32,000 square foot police headquarters at One Justice Square. That day was truly the capstone moment in my career. Leading a state capital police department, um, you having the confidence and, and courage um, backbone to select me. Uh, I, it gave me an opportunity of a lifetime and, and I'm forever grateful. Thank you so much for that. Today, however, is what I would refer to as Capstone Moment 2.0. Uh, for me, as I stand here with, with all of you in front of this iconic Aflac building, or I should say the building previously called the Aflac Building and now forever referred to as the City of Columbia Law Enforcement and Judicial Center, Police Headquarters. What started is the, the best kept secret um, quickly transpired and transitioned to become the worst kept secret. Um, and it's now the most exciting announcement that um, I think in modern times we've ever made at the police department. And um, it, it's kind of a running joke when we talk about it being the worst kept secret. Um, I've you know, literally talked in code and generics to staff for months and months and um, um, I've um, groveled and pleaded with the city manager to, um, um, to for us to be able to announce today like we are and, and share with staff and this happens to be a day that we're recognizing some achievement at a luncheon so it, it couldn't be more more perfect um, as i said none of this would have been possible without our city manager supporting and advocating for this major investment the mayor championed the idea and working behind the scenes with stakeholders to clear a pathway for acquisition then of course 
um, our City of Columbia executive team that, that collectively supported the work and went to work in their areas of responsibility. And, and that's not lost on me. When, when we began pursuing this potential opportunity, um, the, the assistant city managers that have um, tremendous responsibilities that cover, you know, touch every part of our city, um, they all just, um, they were all behind it. They said, Chief, we need this. Our city needs this. The police department needs this. And, and I will forever be um, indebted to them for that, for that support. Because it does take a team to, to do a project of this, um, of this magnitude. And of course, our, our city council, each member wholeheartedly supporting this historic opportunity to improve and advance public safety in our city. Ms. Wilson, Mayor Rickman, uh, Councilman Brown, uh, Councilwoman Bustles, um, our ACMs, Henry Simons, Jeff Palin, Missy Gentry, Pam Benjamin, um, of course, Kelvin Kiesler and the support services staff, um, just uh, everybody behind this project so far, it's, it's been uh, incredible to work with. So why is this building so important? So let me explain. Besides the fact that the headquarters building that we currently occupy is over a century old, pales in size, it's 32,000 square feet. Um, uh, as the mayor mentioned, we are really uh, spread out all over the city and, and not by design. Uh, we have 11 different locations. We have four region offices, a traffic unit, victim advocates, our criminal investigations bureau um, um, divided in half, our, our Bluff Road Annex, um, our training division, um, property and evidence, our Busby Street Annex, our code enforcement, and K-9. That's a lot of assets spread out all over the city. Uh, the fact that we are so spread out creates a number of issues, logistic, logistically challenging, impedes efficiencies, communication, and just general workflow. This new law enforcement and judicial center will provide adequate space for centralization of all core bureaus and units, at what, and this is important, at our full staffing level and future staffing levels as our city grows. The headquarters will include the police administration, office of the chief, patrol bureau, criminal investigations, community services bureau, administrative bureau, victim advocate offices, our records unit, TRU front desk, meaning that's accessible, easily accessible and comfortable for all of our visitors, our special events office, public information office, marketing and communication office, our EOC and real-time crime center, self-service cafes on multiple floors in the building for our employees, recruiting and training center, a one-stop shop. You walk in the door, you get processed, backgrounds, onboarded, and then your training begins. Our fitness and wellness facility for our employees, locker rooms and showers, our metro region office, public meeting space, and a state-of-the-art municipal court facility. This building will be welcoming and inviting to the public who are our customers who have business here but while also maintaining important levels of security to protect our employees and protect our citizens that are visiting. The building will exude professionalism and a spirit of policing excellence. That culture of excellence, the high standards and expectations that we have of each other, as well as the history and the traditions of the police department will be evident on every floor. We want this facility Thank you. To be one that our citizens are proud of and our employees are proud of. When somebody walks in this building that's considering a career in law enforcement, we want them to immediately know where they are and leave no doubt that they have a career at the Columbia Police Department. I'm proud of our employees. I'm proud to lead this department. Um, this, this building is going to be a reflection of the priority and value the city manager, the mayor, and our council put on investing in our employees, their wellness, and the facilities that we work, work in every single day. Um, 
uh, thank you so much again for being here today. And uh, Ms. Wilson and Mayor Rickman, thank you all for championing this and, and making it a reality. Thank you. Thank you. So I wanted to also um, give a few stats, and these, this information certainly will be provided to the media and anyone else who would like it. We welcome the opportunity for you to look at the boards, look at some of what Chief was describing about the facility. Um, it is over 172,000 square feet. Um, it is six floors and on about seven acres almost. So we are um, very fortunate to be able to have growth and expansion opportunities. Um, we're at, but we are budgeting an initial $11 million, including that includes the lease we are leasing to own this building. Um, that includes operation and maintenance, design services, the upfit and construction costs um, and contingency. So all of that would be our phase one approach. And, um, our CFO is here, and he and I uh, fortunately have tried to maintain a healthy general fund cash reserve for the City of Columbia. Um, you often hear us talk about the importance of responsible fiscal um, planning, and we're continuing to do that. We know that communities, you know, everything's important in cities and towns and counties. But as a manager, I do know that two things stand out, and that's being fiscally responsible with the finances of the city and public safety. And so these two things are blending. With this particular opportunity, uh, very nicely thus far, we um, will lean into those funds and interest earnings um, to bundle a funding package for this project as we go. Um, these costs are pretty preliminary and probably will hopefully go down because this is a good turnkey facility. There are a lot of things, as you'll see in the photos and what Chief mentioned, that we're able to really go in and, and utilize. And that, again, comes from this approach for being intentional with working with developers like Baker and & Baker and other partners who understand the benefit of us as a city being able to grow in this way, but also sell properties that we have, as Mayor Rickman mentioned, and, and imagine, hint, hint, all the developers in the world, one Justice Square coming on the market in the heart of the Vista. So, yeah, intentional, purposeful planning. I want to thank Senator Harpootlian for being here. This is his district, and we love that he chose to join us today. Um, I really do want to reiterate my thanks to our executive management team. This couldn't be done without them, as Chief said, Henry Simons, who's the ACM over operations and facilities, as falls under that. Jeff Palin, our assistant city manager and chief financial officer. Missy Gentry, I think, is under the weather, but she's over development. Pam Benjamin, I mentioned earlier. Um, one of her areas is municipal court, and Clint Sheely is over Columbia Water, and we can't do anything without our neighbor who's right here um, at the canal, Columbia Water, um, and all of the teams in the city. It is very true that all of our teams know sometimes we sacrifice for things that have to rise to the top at the time, and oftentimes it is public safety functions. And so everybody leans into that, including the wonderful public relations staff that's here, our marketing and communications team, our newest member, Jay Anna Carter, who works with the police department and myself specifically. So we're thankful. We are thankful in this season of, uh, of being thankful in the holidays.